What's up guys? We're back with another educational video and this week we are talking about meal frequency and sleep and how it relates to obesity. But first, like, subscribe, comment, follow the algorithm, turn your notifications on even though it doesn't actually seem to make a difference because YouTube just does whatever the hell they want. But hey, whatever. We'll give it a shot. So a new study just got published, which was a cohort study over six months. And what a cohort study means is they track people over a period of time and looked at different metrics of whatever they wanted to measure. And so this is different from an epidemiology study where they look at this group of people versus this group of people and the incidence of disease. Here, they track the same people over time, so it's better in the aspect that each person is serving as their own control, and they look at different outcomes. So they were looking at meal frequency, total number of meals per day, number of small, medium, and large meals. They were also looking at sleep duration, how close to sleep their last meal was, and quite a few different things. And they were relating this to the risk of obesity, or rather fat gain. Now, what did they find? They found that there was pretty much no association with almost anything they looked at and the risk of increasing body fat. So in order to assess body fat gain, they used BMI. So they split things into three BMI categories, under 25, 25 to 30, which is considered like overweight, and then above 30, which is considered obese. Now, a lot of people will poo-poo the BMI and they'll say, well, it doesn't work for jack dudes like me. It doesn't, I'm obese on the BMI scale. But on a population level, for most people, BMI is closely associated with their levels of body fat. So it is a reasonable measurement to use in a population-based study where you're trying to get a lot of participants. Now, one of the other strengths of this study is it was six years long. So that is a long time to assess these different measures. They didn't find many differences between BMI categories. So for example, they didn't find a difference in the number of meals per day and the risk of increasing their BMI. They did find a difference in the feeding window and their BMI. And actually it favored the longer feeding window. So people who were in the under 25 BMI category tended to eat their food over a longer period of time than people who were in the above 30 category. And actually it was kind of a linear effect. So as the risk of obesity went up, the duration of feeding window went down. Now here's the caveat to that. It wasn't a massive difference. The difference was 11.9 hours of a feeding window in the lean group or normal group versus 11.2 hours in the obese group. That is a difference of about 0.7 hours or like 45 minutes. Do I think that 45 minutes is explaining the difference in development of obesity? No, I do not. So I don't really know what to do with that finding. I will say it doesn't, at minimum, it doesn't support the idea that a shorter feeding window is beneficial, but it's hard to know just based on this data set. One of the only other differences they found, which is interesting, is the duration from last meal intake until sleep. And they actually found that the closer the meal was to sleep, the lower the risk of the person being obese was. So people in the under 25 BMI category tended to eat meals later, closer to bed, compared to those who were in the other categories. And I think it did kind of have a linear effect. Do I think that is a real outcome? Do I think that that's actually making a difference on obesity? I don't really think so. I think that when it comes to this study, we can't really take too much away from it just because the differences that were significant weren't really that big. So you can have significance without a large difference. And I just don't think the differences that were shown here are really that clinically relevant. What we can say is that based on this study, it doesn't appear that shortening your feeding window is going to make you lose more body fat. And it doesn't appear that eating closer to bed is going to independently make you gain more body fat. If I had to put a takeaway, the takeaway is, once again, energy balance is the dominant factor for this stuff. And if fat loss is a priority, However you can get into an energy deficit is going to best facilitate that fat loss, whether it's intermittent fasting, 
low carb, low fat, so on and so forth. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are looking for customized nutrition coaching, but you don't know what diet style might be best for you, our team BioLane coaches work with people one-on-one -on -one to ensure that they have the optimal nutrition program, not just for them and their goals, but also for their lifestyle. So if you're interested in that, make sure you click the link in the descriptions. Our team BioLane coaches are amazing. They've been handpicked by us. We have been taught our methodology and our way of relating to clients. They've been taught the BioLane way. And I'm telling you, when it comes to nutrition coaching, you cannot do better. So click the link in the description if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching. And I'll catch you guys next week.